Okay. Uh, so we were, uh, um, we had done the, con we had done uh, conservation of mass, right? And then uh, last day, and we had, um, but we were a little bit rushed when we got to the incompressibility. So my thought was to uh, uh, go through. Uh, you can close that. Oh, I can open this one. Um, yeah, uh, so I was a little bit rushed right on this incompressibility, incompressibility. So I thought we could, uh, go through that, uh, at a more, uh, um, reasonable pace. Actually, now that I say that I'm realizing the most important thing in this whole class was the, the very last thing. That we that I'm going to do, which is um, Betz's law, which tells you the uh, maximum theoretical efficiency of a wind turbine. So I think actually, unless you have specific questions about the incompressibility, I think what I'll do is skip that, um, and, uh, and and then come back to it if if we have time. Um, yeah, the, the, there's a subtlety right in the scaling argument here, and it, what what happens is you, it looks like you have a contradiction, but then, yeah, maybe I'll compromise and sort of give you just uh, j just focus on the difficult part. It looked like there was sort of this contradiction in the scaling, right? Because we had the uh, the the fractional density variations here typical in a, in a flow, we argued earlier were of order the Mach number squared over two. And then um, that, that this has to equal the right-hand side. The, 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 this, this equation 27 came from the conservation of mass. So, so that's like a, a rock solid uh, equation, right? And, uh, but then the uh, terms on the right-hand side are multiplied by this, um, what, what, what I call the advective length, uh, advective time scale. It's a, the, the, the length scale divided by the velocity scale where length is just a typical length of the features in the flow. And, and the velocity is a typical velocity that you would find in the flow. And so if you take the ratio of those two, you get it, you'll, you can easily convince yourself you'd have units of time, like meters divided by meters per second, that's going to give you seconds. So this thing, dimensionally, it's time. And uh, it's a typical time scale in the flow, and it's called the advective time scale. And uh, each individual term here, we have, I have three terms added together. They come from the divergence of the velocity. Um, each individual term, by definition, would have a, a, an order of magnitude. Uh, uh, one over the uh, advective time scale. And, and, and so, oh, there we go. Okay. And um, so, so the advective time scale times one over the advective time scale should give you order one, right? But, but the left-hand side is order Mach number squared over two, which we've seen for, for almost all, except for the most extreme flows in the atmosphere and all the flows in the ocean is much, much less than one here. So there's some sort of contradiction. Well, the contradiction is resolved by the fact that these these uh, three uh, terms are not independent. If you know two of them, you, you, you know to a very good approximation the other one, because if I took dv dy plus dw dz and add them together, 
I'll get minus to a good approximation to you by, by dx. What's that? In other words, the flow has a very small divergence. The divergence is, is, uh, is close to zero. Um, and so in that case, we say the flow is, just to give it a name, incompressible or solenoidal. Okay. Um, that's funny. I admitted I, I admitted someone, and then there's there's even less participants. So I'm not sure what happened there. But it should it should tell me right when someone's trying to to join. I think. Uh, I, sorry, I'm just going to double check that that actually got sent. There it is. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. If you can try and join, and then we'll we'll see that that works. Or uh, you are screen sharing. Okay. No. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. So you're P. Uh, yeah. I saw it for a second and then it went yeah. away. Okay, well, I'll continue as we're trying to sort that out. Uh, So the uh, so so we're actually ready to move on to the dynamics of fluid motion. In other words, uh, we can uh, uh, um, we have all the elements to present the Navier-Stokes equation, and um, which, which is the equation, the dynamical equation. And when we say that. What we mean is uh, we have the equation that allows us to uh, take a, the flow field at a given instant in time and integrate forward in time. In other words, predict the, the future evolution of the flow uh, from the starting conditions. The equation that does that is the Navier-Stokes equation. And it's obtained by applying Newton's second law uh, to the uh, con continuous fluid. Now we're going to have a viscous term in there, and um, we're going to uh, assume it's a Newtonian fluid, and finally, uh, so a Newtonian fluid was a type of viscosity. Uh, it, it's the thing that allowed us to predict the stress tensor from this uh, rate of strain tensor, and the, which is part of the velocity, or built from the velocity, and, and the pressure. Um, and, uh, and, um, and it'll simplify even further when we assume incompressibility. And as I've just argued, it's for small Mach number flow, it's, it's incompressible, or that's a good approximation. Okay, so that's, that's where we're headed. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do it. So we consider a fixed volume of fluid. So this could be uh, what we call a control volume, an imaginary surface uh, inside the fluid. Uh, not not moving in time, the, so the fluid is uh, going through it, um, and and the this surface is or this volume is bounded by a surface A um, that's uh, stationary with respect to our inertial reference frame. Then we uh, apply a Newton's second law. So that's a, a force equation, right? We have the ith component of momentum in the volume must 
um, it's actually the, yeah, the time rate of change of the ith component of momentum has to equal the net uh, ith component of the force on the fluid. And, and, and we have to, um, yeah, so, so let's uh, first find the, um, the time rate of change of momentum. So we take the ith component of the velocity and uh, take the material time derivative. Remember, that's the one with the capital Ds here, not the little d. And that means we're, we're in a reference frame following the fluid. So it's the uh, acceleration of a fluid parcel um, just at the instant where it fits inside our control volume of fixed uh, sides. Uh, um, and we need to remember we argued earlier that this is the derivative we want of the velocity to get the acceleration of the fluid parcel, treating it like a particle, I guess. Uh, and um, so the, that, that gives us the acceleration. Then we multiply by the density per, or the mass per unit volume, the density. So that gives us the mass uh, per unit volume. And then we multiply by this uh, dV here, the, the volume of, uh, of a little uh, fluid parcel and, and integrate or little element of fluid and integrate over that volume. So that will give us the, the time rate of change of momentum of the fluid inside that uh, volume. That has to be by Newton's second law. This has to be balanced by the, the total uh, force on that uh, fluid that's in this volume at that instant in time. And, um, and we're just looking, we're doing this one component at a time, right? So this is the ith component here, so of the acceleration. So we look at the ith component of the force and we need the ith component of the force here, which, which remember was the first index on the stress tensor. Um, and uh, so we've broken our force within this volume into two parts, as we always do, the volume force, uh, which we've assumed is F, like uh, Newtons per kilogram or force per unit mass. And then we multiplied by the, the mass per unit volume. And then we multiply by the dV here, the volume element to get uh, the total uh, body force in the ice direction. And then we sum that up over the whole volume plus uh, the surface uh, stresses or surface forces, which we express with this uh, stress tensor. And uh, so it's the ith component is the first index to get the direction of the force. J is the index, remember, on the, on the normal to the surface, because these are forces per unit area. And then uh, we multiply our, by our little area element and we add up over the whole area. Um, okay, so let's, uh, so, so that's how we write it in the most general uh, terms. It's a, the, the, these arguments are all very general because I haven't said what the shape of the volume is. Right, I've been looking at other of uh, fluid mechanics courses, and they sort of uh, cut corners by uh, giving you examples of like cubes or spheres or something. But um, this is uh, at, so with the price of a little bit of ab abstraction here, we can uh, we can be completely general. So I haven't said what this volume is, and uh, actually that's going to be uh, useful in a minute. So we uh, uh, so let's just look at more detail of that first term. So the, remember the material derivative, we can write it as the sum of two parts, the Eulerian time derivative and uh, this advection term. 
right? And notice there's a J here and a J there so that we have to sum over the J so that we get uh, all three components of this advection. This is called the advection term. But this component I has to be the same as that one because that's the direction of the acceleration. And uh, we integrate that over the volume. Um, now let's jump to the last term, which was the, the only one of the three that was a surface integral. So we're integrating over the surface dA here. Remember we can apply Gauss's theorem to change this from an area integral to a volume mm -hmm. integral. The A here has to be the surface that bounds the volume V. And when we pass from this area integral to this volume integral, we take um, the derivative of this uh, argument uh, with respect to X and which X, XJ corresponding to this unit normal J here. So I have d by dx j because it's nj there. Uh, so, so now I still have a repeated index, the j on the stress tensor and the j on the um, uh, spatial derivative here. This is a useful step. So that was Gauss's theorem. And it's useful because now I have three volume integrals, right? That was a volume integral. I had the body force of integral. And so I, could, so, so I rewrote that as a, using Gauss uh, to get a volume integral. So I have three volume integrals integrated over the same volume. I can just combine them all into one big uh, volume integral as I've done here. I just brought these from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, giving me zero. And, uh, and now I do that magical uh, step, uh, which the mathematicians assure us is valid when the integrand, the thing in parenthes square parentheses here, is a smooth enough function. So we just assume it's a smooth function here. In fact, there, there are, uh, 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 there's a whole community who's, who's working on proving that this is always a smooth function. But, but for us, we're practical people. We just uh, say that uh, we're going to assume that's a smooth function. And uh, when it is, then the mathematicians tell us that because this volume was arbitrary, I can say that uh, not only is this integral equal to 0, the integrand here, the quantity in square brackets, has to be equal to 0. That's nice because that gives me a differential equation. So we've passed from a, uh, uh, an integral uh, balance to a differential equation. And here I've just rearranged uh, the terms to get equation 35. And um, this is getting close to the way we normally write the Navier-Stokes equations, but I have this See, I can't solve this equation 35 yet because I have this stress tensor and I don't know what the stress tensor is. So I have to make another assumption. I assume that I have a what I've been calling the Newtonian fluid. Um, it's written here and going from the second to the third line, I've replaced this sigma with this thing here, which is the uh, Newtonian fluid uh, so that was equation 23, I guess, from, from lecture one. Um, it basically says this stress tensor is related to the dynamic, or sorry, mechanical pressure plus two times the dynamic viscosity times the symmetric part of the rate of strain tensor. Sorry, it's a bit of a mouthful, but the, the EIJ and minus two thirds times the same viscosity coefficient times EKK, which is the trace of the symmetric part of the rate of strain tensor, but it's also just the divergence, the flow divergence. 
times this uh, Kronecker delta. And uh, then if you do some manipulations, and I admit it's not uh, short or quicker, I, I, I claim it's, it's, it's easy, but, uh, but it's not quick. Uh, to to uh, then manipulate this and arrive at to pass from thirty equation thirty six to thirty seven. Okay. Um, I'll do one of the steps for you here. Okay. So if I sum over j because I have a repeated index here, I'm going to have d by d x of minus p uh d by dx j but that equals zero whenever j is not equal to i so the so i'm left with only one term it's minus dp dx i right i would add three terms but but there are two of them are equal to zero it's only when j equals i uh you could ask me, well, what's i? But i is a free index, and you have to choose that from the start. You 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 ask the question, or this this equation gives us all three components of the uh, Navier-Stokes equation. So you can choose i equal to x, and then we're talking about the x direction. So then we'd have uh, minus uh, minus one over rho dp dx, and if if J, uh, I is two, we're talking about the Y direction. So then we'd have minus DP DY here. That's the, uh, that's the logic there. That's how you use this. Um, so that I just done one of the terms for you uh, and I've left it as an exercise for you to, to do the other parts. Oh, let me just mention like here I have the, dynamic viscosity, but here you see the kinematic viscosity. So what happened there? Well, I've got a, a rho down here, right? So, so mu over rho equals nu by definition. Uh, if you look, if you've forgotten, that was just the definition of the kinematic uh, viscosity. Uh, I, I, I still only have one per. So what happened when you tried to? Uh... Oh, oh really? So you're my one participant? No, I'm, I'm not. Um... Huh. You are the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> I often feel that way. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> um, okay. Well, in. So I guess hopefully people would be emailing me if they had a big concern, right? Hey, I think what I'll do, I'll just finish that I'm almost done here and then I'll, I'll send an email to everybody. Um, yeah, so uh yeah yeah i guess with it i'll just mention i with this uh body force i've said well let's assume it's gravity so if it's gravity it's minus g remember this was in units of force per unit mass because we had to multiply by the density to get the force per unit volume so so if it's force per if it's gravity and it's force per unit mass and we're near the surface of the earth then it's minus g right minus g in the z direction and 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 this uh, delta i j takes account of the direction force so if we set i equal to x for instance or one for the x direction then 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 there's no gravity because that's the horizontal direction. Um, uh, and then I've, oh, I, I've written out the equation, the stuff we needed from, uh, this is that key equation from uh, lecture one for the Newtonian fluid re relating the stress tensor to this symmetric part of the rate of strain tensor, EIJ. Here's its definition. You'll need that if you want to go through in detail and find 
uh, the de de derive like pass from uh, the this this line to this line. It's a good exercise to do. Then you'll sort of feel like you own this equation, um, or you understand it. And so that's what I'm asking you to do in exercise 3.3. And um, because this is the last time I see you in this class, I'll see you for the ocean class, but uh, I just give you the solution here, but I, I don't wanna go through all this long derivation now. I just wanted you to attempt it and then know that you've got the solution yourself. You can, you can verify after. Now I have a doubt whether I've sent you the very latest version with, normally I did, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so let's... Uh...